we just made another huge RV mistake. Or, well, I did. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. We are living proof, really, that even after four years being on the road with all of our experience, we can still screw things up. We thought we'd share with you our mistakes so you can learn from our mistakes. And hopefully not not make the same mistakes. <laughs> yeah. But thankfully, not only our mistakes, but we have a ton of friends that have volunteered to dish out their own mistakes as well. Hi, I'm Lawrence. And I'm Natalie. And we are the Brazen Brits. Now, our biggest RV mistake actually goes way back to the beginning. Uh, well, we've made plenty of mistakes, but our biggest <laughs> one by far is buying too small a truck. Yeah. Now it is fine for our rig at the moment, but we did look and we're very envious of those of you with fifth wheels mm. and we love the high roof, but that just brings up the payload and our F-250 diesel cannot carry it. So we are restricted by what we can tow. Our most recent mistake, well, my most recent mistake, I grabbed a hose that I that is used for potable water and I hooked it up or connected it to my black tank flush turned on the water, went inside, and I was like, why is this tank taking forever to fill up again? Well, we found out the reason why is because I hooked up to the black tank flush. As it started to come out of the toilet, I realized Thankfully, I Thankfully, Bill up. walked back in the house. <laughs> yeah. Because we had been outside talking to our friends, Alan and Angie, and thankfully he was just thinking um, and saying, I don't know why it's not filling up. Let me just go double check. And he walked into the house just as it started overflowing from the toilet. So then I run outside to the wet bay to turn the water off or to the faucet just as it starts to come out from the top of the roof. Yeah. Again, for the second time that since we've pleasant. been RV. Yeah. So I was, I was... I was distracted. I wasn't paying attention. I just grabbed a hose. We were we were unplugged, so we were not connected to anything at the time. So I I hooked up to the water to put water in the fresh tank. I should have grabbed my fresh tank hose, potable water hose, with the quick connects, and I would have automatically put it in the quick connect. Like That's normal. why I do that. Yeah. So I don't know why I did that that day. So thankfully, Alan and Ange ran over to their rig. They had a bunch of just kind Excess of scrap towels. towels they use yeah. for their pets. So they gave us those for the bathroom because we didn't have sewer where we were when we were filling up water. So we had to close up our RV. We weren't even ready to close. So no. we had to close up the RV. Luckily, there was a dump like Close not by. even a hundred yards yeah. away. So we were able to run over there and dump. But that doesn't mean stuff didn't splash out of the toilet, go under our bathroom cabinets. It went everywhere. It was it was so gross. <laughs> and all I could do is apologize because it was 100% completely my fault. And completely my fault. And I've done it twice. Uh, and I vowed I wouldn't do it again. I'm vowing now on camera that I will never do it again. If he does, I'm telling you though. <laughs> hey, we're Howard and Caitlin Newstay of the New State Nomads. It's not just a clever name, it is our name. <laughs> and we've been on the road for four years and you learn a lot in those four years. You learn good things, you learn bad things and what to do and what not to do. Yeah, so when Stacey and Phil asked us what our biggest mistake is RVing. Um, There's a couple. Yeah, <laughs> how about a recent one? Um, which is be really careful when you're scouting out for uh, boondocking locations. We love to dry camp, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's easy all the time. No, and my biggest downfall was I didn't read other people's recommendations about a way to approach the specific camping spot. And so I went basically like over a mountain in our CRV with our bike rack and our bikes on there, and I ended up getting very stuck because yeah. the bike rack got pulled out and I was just immobile on the side of a mountain. <laughs> and we always try and scout it out if we can in our tow vehicle before we bring the RV, but you can still get stuck in your scouting vehicle. And that's exactly what happened to Caitlin. And um, unfortunately she got thoroughly stuck. The good thing was I did still have cell service and I was able to call for help and I wasn't that far off from where the actual spot was. So he was able to like walk up eventually and find me. But it was definitely a good lesson and a reminder. Like most of the time we're not trailblazing these places. And so if other people have warnings, heed those warnings. Like we're all a community and we all help each other for a reason. And I just like totally didn't even mm -hmm. read the way I should have gone. Correct. And that's one of at least five red flags. <laughs> if you check out the video on our channel, you'll see that um, she definitely should have realized that there were so many reasons not to be going the way she went. Another one of my mistakes, see the theme here, was with our tow dolly. 
So when I hook the car up on the tow dolly, once the tires come up and are flat, the front tires are flat on the dolly and the ramps come up, there's a pin you're supposed to put in to lock it so the, the dolly ramps do not drag on the ground. Well, we were leaving Disney, um, Fort Wilderness. We're driving down the road and I look in the, the rear, the side um, mirror and I see this lady behind us trying to flag me down and it looked like she was waving. And I was like, oh, somebody spotted us. They're, they're waving at us. Then we get up to a red light and she pulls up next to us and she says, hey, your ramps are dragging. And I went, oh, she wasn't waving. She was trying to flag us down. Yeah, that, that was a doozy. And I don't know why when we had the tow dolly that we never did a double check like we do with our flat tow. So right. we, obviously our, our tow dolly is gone. But with our flat tow, we always drive forward, make sure the wheels are turning, the brakes aren't set, and make sure everything is good with a hookup. So with the dolly, we should have been doing that too, and yeah. we didn't. Had we pulled forward, we would have known immediately that there was a problem. And we drove a pretty, I mean, <laughs> it was a, quite a few miles before somebody flagged us down. So definitely learn from us, no matter what you're driving, pulling, towing, trailer, flat tow, whatever, always drive forward just a little bit to make sure everything is working as it's supposed to. And if you see sparks like we were seeing, <laughs> or the lady behind us was, that's a clue that you did There's something a problem. wrong. <laughs> so we're Tanya and Dave from Let's Turn It Up World and Turn It Up World. What was our biggest mistake? Slow down, you move too fast. Because who, who really got on top of you about that? You did all the time because I just I'm a visual person so it is nice to just slow down like we're so excited to be on the road in the RV we just want to get to everything but I think the way to really enjoy the RV life slow down and enjoy what RV life is supposed to be exactly about. take your time spend time in the campsites right don't rush to spot the spot the spot because packing up and the drives they aren't always fun they're not always fun especially in a small rig like this it's like Tetris I think someone once told me I believe Stacy she said it best, it's like Tetris. So. Yes, oh yeah. And plus the community is so great. You spend time in the campsites, the RV park to be great people. Yeah. Just take your time, don't rush around and, and go from spot to spot. So let's talk about a general RV mistake and that's buying a bunch of unnecessary gear that you're never gonna use. Like we did. Yes, yeah. so the reality is just because a YouTuber talks about something they found that they love, it doesn't mean that item is gonna work for you the way you RV or with your type of RV. So make sure before you buy stuff, figure out if you're gonna use it, if you're gonna need it and don't throw your money away for nothing like we did. So I'm Charity from Grateful Glam Lamper and boy we have a story to tell you and that is what happened was what we like to call a poopsie. Now we were mooch docking at a family member's house thankfully when this happened or else it could have been a much larger problem than it was but mooch docking we were using our macerator pump to empty our black tank into a septic system now our macerator that we were using is kind of older it's not one that hooks directly to the rv it goes through a section of sewer hose first and where we made the mistake was that we did not really check that sewer hose because it was older and it sprung a leak on us because it was older and it was just, it was worn out. And yes, needless to say, it was like a moment out of the movie RV where we had a small poop geyser that turned into a larger poop geyser because our macerators pumping the poo. So we had to shut everything off very, very quickly. It was just, it was a moment of shock, honestly. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, clean up the, the mess that ensued. But the lesson that we learned in that is that sewer hoses do have a certain like life expectancy and that can vary so much based on if it's out in the sun a lot or if you're in a climate that is maybe drier than others. And so just check those sewer hoses and make sure that they, you know, still feel like that they've got some elasticity on it, that they're not getting old or brittle because you don't want to realize that your sewer hose is gone beyond its expected life with an experience like we had. Another mistake we made was not checking our pedestal before we put the jacks down and open up the slides. So normally I would take out my surge protector, plug it in, let it run through its checks, make sure we're good to go before we did anything with the rig. One particular time, we got in a hurry. We had been boondocking for a while. We didn't check the pedestal. We plugged, uh, we opened up everything, got set up, went to plug in the uh, RV, 
and the pedestal had a, had a bad fault code, is what we were showing on the EMS surge protector. So we ended up having to close everything back up, and we had to move over four feet in our site and plug into the adjoining site's pedestal until they could come out the next day to fix our pedestal. Because, of course, we pulled in five minutes before closing, so nobody was around to help us that night. We're Chris and Martha from Venturesome Couple, and here's one of our RV mistakes that we made. So our worst mistake ever was my worst mistake. I can't blame the missus at all. So I went out and I hooked up our black tank flush. I closed the valve to do a back flush and set my timer for the wrong amount of time because I was distracted. Not only did I overflow my entire trailer, so the water was coming out of the toilet, running out of our bedroom, I went a step further. The water got into the underbelly, so I grabbed a knife, actually a razor blade, and I went to open up my underbelly to drain the water out so that it didn't mess up the insulation. Because of the stress, I actually ended up using the razor blade and poking a hole, about a two foot hole, through the bottom of our gray tank. And if that's not bad enough, I went a step further and grabbed a drill because I wasn't getting enough water out because at this moment, I didn't realize my gray tank was there because I was, like I said, stress. I poked four holes with a drill through the bottom of the same gray tank. So in a matter of about 30 seconds, I flooded my trailer, I slid open my gray tank, I drilled four holes through the bottom of it, and then I realized what happened. So I spent the next hour doing a plastic weld and basically a generic patch job on it just to get me to the point where I can order a new tank. And if that's not the worst thing I ever face as an RVer, I'm in trouble. Let's talk about what happens when you don't listen to your inner cues. You know, that hair on the back of your neck that stands up and <laughs> says you probably shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, like the time we parked on a soft grass surface, nose in first, which I think in hindsight saved us. But mm -hmm. we parked on this site. We didn't feel good about it. We, we got talked into it. We talked ourselves into yeah. it. And then the rain came, which we were not expecting. And it rained for three days. Soft ground, rain. You know what happens. Motor home, yeah. absolutely. So we definitely got stuck in the mud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to say and, the least. And it, it, we should have listened to our, our guts, gut instinct. Yeah. Um, and we didn't. So we ended up having to elicit the help. Actually, they just came over. They saw us yeah. in, in dire straits. So they came over, offered up a ton of help. It was a Sunday. People were leaving. It took us a couple of hours and a tractor to get out. That is not the most settling feeling, no. knowing that your rig is sunk to the axles in the back um, and you have no means to get it out initially. So we, we learned a huge lesson on that one. Yeah, so if you are thinking this might not be a good idea, listen to yourself, be cautious, better be safe than sorry. Hey everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Susan. And we are RV blogger and uh, we live in Maryland. Uh, we have our website, our YouTube channel, and we're beginning to travel all around, all over the country and have a great time camping wherever we go. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a very, very interesting experience where mm -hmm. we made a huge, gigantic mistake. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. We were traveling across, if you're familiar with the area, Route 90 up in the uh, Boston area, which gets massively backed up anytime it's rush hour. And so I got very frustrated and I thought, you know what? We're going to get out of this traffic jam. So we put, we used Waze and decided to get around the traffic jam. So right. we're on this back road and we're, you could see Route 90 and all the traffic sitting We were still. not anywhere near the highway. <laughs> and we're making all this great time. And then we came to an overpass that we could not go under. Yes. And um, unfortunately- And we were not the only ones that decided to take the detour, you know, so other people recognize that the traffic jam. So oh, yeah. we had a, we had a following behind us. Yeah, we had a, f it was just jam packed. So we, we get to this bridge, we can't go under it. And there's traffic just coming from the other direction because it's rush hour. And there's people behind us. Long line Bumper to us. bumper. So luckily this guy coming the other way jumped out, stopped the traffic, and then he went behind us to a road where we could back up and turn around. He let the cars go from behind us, so it gave us room to do it. He saved us. He yes. was a fellow RVer that <laughs> knew the predicament we were in. I think there was a fella in the booth 
up where that overpass was who yelled out, did you use Waze? <laughs> we were like, yeah. So obviously this wasn't the first time. <laughs> yeah, he'd seen it happen before. Uh, so anyway, it was a huge mistake. Yeah. So and Waze is great for trying to get you somewhere the quickest way possible. In your it's car. It's just not RV friendly. No, you, it doesn't know how big your rig is or right. anything. So it's great if you're in your car. So anyway, that's our hugest mistake. We highly recommend an RV GPS. Like, I don't know, there's a ton of them out there. But, right. Uh, okay. So this next one again is all film. <laughs> <laughs> there's a running theme here. And, and although I, I tried to do my due diligence in doing things correctly, um, one of the things that really got us, and I was so embarrassed that it did happen, was changing the generator oil. Not only was I changing it uh, myself, but I was doing it in my sister's business's parking lot um, that she let us boondock in. So I changed out the, the oil like I normally, uh, that I've done quite a few times with no issues. But this time I took out the oil filter and I did not check nor notice that the uh, gasket that goes on the oil filter did not come out with it. So I took it, put it in my bag, grabbed my new filter, put a little oil around the gasket. I put it up on there, got it nice and hand tight, put my oil back in the generator, fired up the generator, and blah, the bottom dropped out. Mm -hmm. All of my fresh oil came out of the bottom. And you guessed it, the old gasket was stuck up inside the generator. And had I looked at my old oil filter as I took it out, I would have seen that the gasket was missing. I could have taken it off. So I had double gaskets, mm -hmm. which gave, left me a gap, and all my oil came out. So luckily, there is some luck in this. <laughs> I always put out a tarp when I'm changing the oil. In the, in the event that there's some spillage or whatever, I can clean it up on the tarp. Well, the tarp caught most of it, and the, the gravel parking lot caught the rest. So I had to dig down about three inches, I think, <laughs> to get up all the oil that I had put in there. Um, but again, lesson learned, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, make sure that when you change out your oil filter, the old gasket is still on there. And thank you, Michelle. <laughs> we're so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hi guys, we're Chris and Katrina with our Everyday Getaway, and we would like to tell you about our biggest RV mistake so far in our travels. And I would say the number one mistake would be not teaching Katrina how to drive this 39 foot class A diesel pusher beast, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You want to tell them what happened real quick? Uh, long story short, we were out uh, just having a great old time hanging out and Chris gets sick, emergency room. In the hospital for a few days. Right. It just happened to coincide with okay. some reservations when we were going to check out and check into a new place. Right. So he was flown about six hour drive away. So there was no chance that I was going to get that RV where he was. And by the time he was ready to be picked up or he was still in the hospital, I had to move. I couldn't move the RV. So luckily for us, we were at a campground where the staff there accommodated us, but it was a holiday weekend and it was very difficult for us. And it just proves that you really need to know how to do everything as far as setting up and tearing down your rig and both of you need to drive because yes. it could have been much worse. Yeah, it could have been really bad and right. thankfully we had some people in the area that could have helped us out if we needed it but had we been in an area where we didn't have that help mm -hmm. she would have been driving the RV just winging it try to figure it out so I think that would be our biggest mistake so far. Another small mistake that I've made is right here at the old tank fill. So I was trying to fill up the freshwater tank another time and I went inside and 30 minutes later the, the indicator hadn't moved at all. I'm like, why is the, the water not coming into the tank? It's because I didn't take it from city water to tank fill. So if ever you're having slow water during fill up, you might want to come out and check that. My name is Aaron. This is my wife, Chris. We are from the channels Irene Iron Travels, which is all about RV life, travel and boondocking, as well as our second channel, Healthy RV Living, which is with Coach Chris doing a lot of food, nutrition, and fitness talk. It's been fun hanging out with Stacy and her goofy husband this past week. Today we're gonna to talk about Phil's favorite subject, which is food and this grill. We just got this Weber Q1200 grill about six months ago, and we always had a big grill at the house, but what we didn't realize is that with a small grill like this and you're using it every single day like we do, it builds up a lot of gunk on the inside and we actually almost burnt down our entire RV 
with a fire about this high. So one day Aaron turned it on. He was doing the preheat. It usually takes five to 10 minutes to preheat. So I came outside after that a lot of time and it was just billowing smoke to the point where there was a problem. And then I look down and I see fire flames dripping down. Like grease was on fire and it was dripping down. And I was so afraid to even open it. I just went inside. I said, Aaron, come outside right now. And you might want to bring the fire extinguisher, which luckily that's right by our door. Good tip is always have a working fire extinguisher and know where it is and know how to use it. And then Aaron came out and brought it. We brought the awning in. I was afraid the awning would start on fire. Or there was melt. so much smoke billowing up from this and covering the awning that I thought it was melting. Yeah. Make sure you look at your little tag, make sure it's charged all the way up. So it did wipe out clean and we're using it and it's like the best it's ever looked and it's good as new and now we are being much more careful. My name is Ryan. I'm one half of Miller's in Motion. Lauren, my wife, unfortunately is not here. Uh, but our biggest RV mistake, I actually have two because we have only been doing this for about nine months now. So we were at a horse show in Gulfport, Mississippi, and we were headed back to Texas early in the morning. We were on the road at about 3 a.m. Somebody may have forgotten to unplug the 50 amp cord. So I got a brand new receptacle on the side of my rig, new cord, and I had to buy a new pedestal. <laughs> so the only, the other one that my wife said I absolutely had to mention was uh, we didn't realize on our black tank uh, flush that there was a overflow valve and I was using it to um, back up the system and allow it to come down and do a really, really good black tank flush and it flooded our entire underbelly. <laughs> and I had to drop the whole underbelly, replace all of the insulation and that was less than desirable, I think is the best way to say that. So as you can see with Ryan here, he's proving that there are a lot of common themes in these mistakes. A lot of them we have talked about are kind of similar, especially the 50 amp. So what you may not know <laughs> is we actually did the same thing early on in RVing. We were less than three months in, we left it plugged in. It was pouring rain. We were just trying to hurry and get out of there. And sure enough, Phil told me to move forward. We were still connected, but fortunately for us, we, it actually pulled the plug out of the pedestal. So we didn't have to replace it and it didn't damage our, our plug at all. We got really lucky. It also doesn't sound like you went a solid quarter mile before realizing it. Um, no, because <laughs> Phil was actually behind us and he uh, actually saw the cord being pulled and yeah. drug on the site. And then he like almost had a heart attack. Yeah, I was, freaking I was, out. I was by myself and it was tired and I hadn't had any yes. coffee yet. So I'm blaming lack of caffeine. Blame so <laughs> the takeaway from this is always do a final walk around when you're finished with your checklist before you actually get in your vehicle and start driving away. One more walk around by one of you would avoid these, these problems. We actually now do it as long as we're together. We're not at the moment, but as we're together, we do both of us do a walk around now. Oh, that's smart. So I'll do one and then I'll bump inside and she'll do an outside one and then go inside. I do so outside, are you reversing she then? You're double checking each We're other? We're double checking each other in the reverse. I love that. So, so use your checklist and then again, double check, check yourself. Save your cash. Yes, yes. <laughs> it only takes a few seconds, but you're right. It will save you a ton of money and stress. Yep. Most mistakes happen when you're setting up or breaking down your campsite and RV. So if somebody comes up to you while, while you're doing those jobs, you might want to start over. That's what we do. If somebody comes up and starts talking to us, if I'm in the middle of my checklist, once they leave, I go back to the beginning to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Or you can just say, give me just a minute and I'll be right with you and finish your procedure because you don't want to interrupt what you typically do routine over and over because yep. it'll really throw you off. And we love how friendly our viewers are, but sometimes they're just too friendly too fast. You know, <laughs> Let me set up my, my yeah. sewer hose before you come over. So it does happen. And if that's the case, stop, go back to the beginning and go back through your checklist. And speaking of checklists, make sure you have a checklist. Yep. Whatever works for you is fine. We have a, some you can download from our website. I'll put the link below, or you can create your own, or there's a ton out there to choose from. The point is just find one and use it every time. We still use a right. checklist every time just to double check ourselves. There's a ton of resources out there. It might be the person in the site next to you, phone a friend, whatever, but if you're, when in doubt, Call somebody, ask for help. Yeah, if you're nervous about doing something, that's a clue. Stop. Don't move forward. Step back. Taking a deep breath sometimes will save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Hopefully by us sharing our mistakes and by our kind friends sharing their mistakes, it will prevent you from doing the same stuff yourself. Yeah.
and I've, uh, hopefully we don't do any other mistakes that Phil has made. Maybe we'll share some of <laughs> Stacy's mistakes. More <laughs> I don't of them. have very many. Uh, but we'd like to know what, what are some of the mistakes you've made over and over, because we can all learn from each other's mistakes. That's why we're doing this. So if you have a mistake that we haven't mentioned, Go ahead and drop it down below. Yeah, and we want to give a shout out to everybody who helped us out with yes. this with this video because face it, we all don't want to always admit our mistakes, but we know it's helpful for everyone. So drop down below, check out these links that I'm leaving from all of the channels that participated and hop over and tell them hi. That's right, you know, misery loves company and we were certainly in good company.